Morning all, and welcome back to a particularly frosty WTF. And uh, not that we get too many cold mornings here in Swansea, but as you can see by the four square, it's looking decidingly icy. But if you're watching this from Canada or the States, you're probably saying, oh, that's not cold. Well, for us, here in South Wales, we used to get a few cold days back 10 years ago. We used to get, even get snow, but uh, don't seem to get much of that these days. Anyway, enough of the waffle. Let's get back inside. And uh, I want to show you a few more little projects that we're uh, doing during the lockdown. I remember the 813 transmitter that I put together mm, about two or three weeks ago. Well, what I'm planning to do with this is see if we can convert it to, uh, well not convert it, but add AM uh, onto it. So at the moment it's, um, it's really just for CW. It's a uh, 813 and a QVO3-10 as a driver. And I did have a few niggles with it, as you can remember from the the video was it was chirping quite a lot and there was some instability so what I've done with this is I've added a little transistorized crystal oscillator and that's a really improved things dramatically it doesn't chirp it it's got a really good uh, CW note and uh, I've actually had quite a few QSOs with it on 80 and 40 and it's really it's it's really proved to be quite rock solid so I'm quite happy with it but um what I want to do is we want to get it to work on AM as well because I think it would be quite uh, quite good on AM. I think we could run about uh, 400 watts peak envelope which is uh, the maximum allowed here in the UK on AM. So I think it would be quite suited for that. As you can see down below there it's sitting on a uh, power supply. Now this power supply, again some of you might recognise it from previous videos and uh, I originally built this supply here for the uh, 813 linear amplifier, which I don't really use much these days. I've I've got bigger amplifiers, and uh, I uh, I'll probably end up uh, scrapping it and getting all the bits out of it and making up something else. I I suspect, but I always wanted to uh, build a separate power supply with this uh, transmitter, and uh, I've, I'm going to show you what I've done so far on the bench. Uh, I want it. Uh, I want the power supply to sort of have a bit of a vintage feel to it, and uh, also be a, a similar sort of colour. I quite like this turquoise actually. It's a bit different from the greys and the plain aluminium that you often see with homebrew stuff. I've, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm drawing on my artistic uh, talents here to try and uh, spruce up some of the old homebrew stuff because um, it does. Um, I don't know. It adds a bit of character, I suppose. Anyway, let me show you what we've got on the bench. So as you can see, we've got a nice little smorgasbord, as they say, of transformers and chokes here for this uh, power supply. <clears throat> the uh, the chassis uh, was actually one that I built up for a modulator, a 300 watt modulator, which I built up a few years ago. Uh, which um, kind of worked but then I had problems with it so uh, it was lying on the floor for ages and I thought well it would be a good chassis to use for a <clears throat> power supply so I basically replaced the uh, top panel and the front panel and uh, we're going to use this for our uh, high voltage power supply now as you can see there we've got some uh, pretty chunky transformers and uh, I'm going to show you what we plan to do with all this to build up a power supply, not only for the transmitter but also for the uh, for the modulator. Okay guys as you can see here I've been pretty hard at work and we've got ourselves a nice power supply matching colours going with the 813 transmitter and you'll also see there at the bottom that we've also got a, a test rig modulator and I'll uh, talk about that in a minute. I'll just quickly show you the trans the uh, 
transmitter's power supply. Uh, there's not much to it. Um, it's pretty standard stuff. Sorry for the cliche, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, we've got two big transformers over there. See if we can zoom in a little bit. Two nice big transformers and uh, the one on the left is an old Admiralty, Admiralty transformer and that supplies about anything up to uh, 1200 volts. I think we've got it just under 1200, about 1100 volts at the moment on the tappings there. And the one on the right is a 612, oh 612, why it's 612 I have absolutely no idea but it delivers the voltage. So we've got 1200 volts for the HT for the anode of the 813 and we have 1200 volts or thereabouts probably a little bit more for the modulator for the anode of the two GU72s which I have decided to use for the modulator and you'll also notice there that we've also got our Xenon rectifiers 3B28s and we can take those out if we want and we can put uh, a couple of 866A's mercury vapor rectifiers uh, they're perfectly interchangeable the advantage with the Xenon tubes is that they don't need too much of a warm-up time unlike the mercury vapor rectifiers so you can pretty well switch those on immediately and uh, they look pretty cool they go sort of a purpley color and maybe we can demonstrate that in a minute. I'll quickly show you the underneath of the uh, power supply how I've set it out and uh, then we should be able to show you the modulator so this is the uh, underneath of the power supply and uh, well it's all pretty standard there's nothing really much uh, out of the ordinary here so we've got our these are the filament transformers for the uh, uh, for the well at the moment I've got xenon rectifiers in at the moment and then at the, the uh, let me get a screwdriver so that's our choke and I've got that insulated that's the choke on the HT on those Hammond chokes and um, lots of insulation strip there so on, uh, this is quite a lucky find actually they're all ceramic so we're uh, very good for high voltage power supplies another choke down there for the 300 volt supply and then down the bottom uh, we've got some uh, little boards with diodes and uh, capacitors so uh, nothing really uh, out of the ordinary there I think one of the things if you if you're not familiar with high voltages or high voltage work um, it's quite good to get into the practice of you know trying to lay out things neatly label everything like you know like these boards here I've got them labeled and everything with the uh, label maker just so that you know what goes where and it's also good for troubleshooting as well so that's the underside of the power supply and so far that seems to work, haven't had any major problems with that so we'll show you uh, the rest of it so this is my highly lethal test rig of a modulator and as you can see there we were using a pair of Russian GU72s and these are powered tetrodes and you could ask yourself why am I using GU72s as opposed to say 813s well I've got a couple of these in the shack and uh, the advantage of the, of the GU72s is that they can tolerate a quite a high plate voltage uh, similar to 813s I mean you could use 813s uh, but uh, I, got, I think these look quite interesting actually they've sort of got a, a waffly shaped uh, anode which um, is a little bit unusual and <clears throat> never really used these valves before they're not that expensive you can get them off eBay and uh, the the bases are relatively easy to find but the uh, the anode top caps are a, a little bit more of a different story uh, you can't really get the anode top caps well I've never seen them anyway so I've had to fabricate some uh, straps out of some copper 
and uh, that seems to work pretty okay although uh, I think one of them is getting a little bit warmer than the other for some reason uh, even though the bias voltage and the cathode current is more or less the same but uh, anyway they do it does actually work I've actually tested this modulator and uh, I'm quite uh, quite pleased with it uh, GU72 seem to uh, be pretty good actually I think people have used them as audio valves uh, in the past I've seen a few projects using all those as audio valves and uh, they seem to work pretty much okay so at the moment I'm just waiting for everything to warm up uh, this meter here is basically measuring the voltage across a 0.5 ohm uh, resistor and it gives an indication of the uh, cathode current so bear in mind that we've got the heater, the, the heater current as well included in this so 1.03 is, is equivalent to about 2 amps which is more or less the heater requirement of the, uh, the two GU72s that's our UM3 and then this meter here is just recording the uh, bias voltage so at the moment it's minus 43 we've got the transmitter there and obviously the power supply which I will now turn on just give those uh, xenon rectifiers a little bit of time to uh, to warm up a bit you can just about see the uh, heaters there so at the moment we are transmitting on 3550 and uh, we're into a dummy load of course because we don't really want to be broadcasting music on the uh, on the amateur bands we might get in trouble for that so we are into a dummy load and this receiver here is there's a little bit of coax I think coming out from the uh, aerial input but other than that it's um, whatever it receives is radio waves are radio waves so there's no connection between the receiver and all this lot okay so what we'll do is we'll give it a go Let's give it a whirl. Bring up the audio slowly. there we go folks with about 80 watts carrier there uh, 80 to 90 watts so what I gotta do now is I'm gonna build this thing up into a proper chassis and uh, and I think this whole setup will be complete uh, G6 TVJ GW0FZY okay and um, I've uh, got I think I've got the camera rolling so hopefully um, uh, we should be able to record this for the um, for the video and the demonstration of this uh, um, 813 transmitter. So I uh, hope you're still copying me, uh, Ian. 
and I'll put it back to you. Uh, G6TVJ, GW0FZY. Why G6 TV join the journey? Yeah, okay, Justin, on, uh, on coffee, uh, still the uh, same business there. And um, that last over, you were just over 10 over 9, between 10 and uh, 15 uh, over 9 on my um, maybe slightly uh, slightly uh, pessimistic um, uh, S meter on the uh, HF uh, 225 receiver. So, um, uh, transmitter there all sounding very good, good punchy modulation um, and um, good sounding. Uh, Standing uh, audio there. Um, uh, back to you, GW0FZY from D6TVJ. Uh, GW0FZY returning. Yeah, okay then, Ian. All, uh, all copied. Um, for the benefit of the viewers of this video, I um, when I when I showed the previous um, um, clips of this uh, modulator, I. Uh, I had it at a much higher HT uh, when I was getting some problems with arcing, but um, as mentioned previously, I've uh, I've reduced the HT down now to uh, 500 volts, and um, it's working pretty okay now. Um, yeah, you're still coming through very nicely, actually. Um, yeah, if you could do a, a little video of um, of your end, um, so then we can uh, see what the um, what the audio uh, sounds like um, being received. Um, so uh, that would be uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, um, going back to the um, to the APU and everything, yeah, I note I note um, your um, your comment about the um, about that reluctance probe and the tooth gear wheel. I think I can remember vaguely a while ago that um, on the RB211 or was one other engine. I can't remember. I was sort of having to do that counter gear teeth. <laughs> No, your trick with the tipex. Uh, I think I did something similar. I can't remember what it was. I think I might have put a blob of yellow paint on a on a um, on a probe or something, or one of those reluctance wheels. Anyway, I'll put it back to you. Uh, Six TBJ GW zero FZY. Yeah, uh, I G six TBJ returning. Yeah, okay, there, Justin. All copied. I've just got a little. Uh, little video there. Um, I tell you what, I just opened up the filters on the uh, the HF225. I normally listen about 4KC and um, it, say, you're, you're, it sounds quite a lot brighter actually with 7 or 10KC. Um, it, it's quite a bright sounding uh, transmitter so um, you've certainly got plenty of uh, plenty of HF there so it's uh, it, it's um, not, not muffled in any way. Quite, quite different in characteristic I think to the Class E.